This is the second part of the introduction to probabilities. Please watch the first part if you haven't done so already. So we're going to start off again with our example. We have our billiard balls 1 through 15 and we have two subsets of set S which is our odd number set and our prime number set. Now let's draw a picture of the sample space. Now first we want a giant universe and the giant universe is going to be our set S. You can put the S outside or inside, just somewhere to denote that this big universe is set S. Now there's going to be set A, and this is going to be all the elements that are in set A, and then there's going to be an overlapping circle, and this is going to be set B. And what we're going to do is just go methodically through all the elements in set S and see where they belong. So we're going to start off with 1. Now 1 was in set S and also in set A. So therefore the 1 belongs here in this space because we see it is within set S and set A at the same time. A is inside of S so everything inside of this uh, blob will be part of S, but it also belongs to A too. But you'll note it did not belong to B. Now we're going to look at 2. 2 belongs to set S and set B, so 2 goes over here. You can see that 2 belongs is in B because it's inside the circle of B and it's also inside of set S. Now, we are going to list 3, but 3 happens to be in all three sets, A, B, and set S. So we're going to put 3 here in this interlocking circle, so it belongs to both A and B, and it also belongs to S. So we've covered 1, 2, and 3. Now let's look at 4. 4 belongs in S, but it doesn't belong in A or B. So let's put uh, 4 outside here. All right, 4 belongs there because it doesn't belong in A or B. Now 5 belongs in S, A, and B, so we're going to put 5 inside here because now it's part of both circles A and B, and it is also part of S. 6 does not belong to A or B. 7 belongs to all 3, so we're going to put a 7 there. 8 does not belong to A or B, and we'll put 8 over here. I mean, there's no reason for, it could be up here or down here, but 8 is now done. 9 belongs to A, but 9 does not belong to B, so belongs in A. 10, not in A or B, but in S. 11 belongs to all three. Uh, let's look at 12. 12 doesn't belong to A or B. And 13 belongs to all three. 14 is an S, but not an A or B. And then 15 belongs in set A, but not set B. So this is our sample space. It's cool to refer back to this because we can kind of use that as we introduce the concepts of or and the concepts of and. So let's look at this problem. We're going to look at the or. So what we mean by or, especially if we refer to like A or B, it's really anything inside one or the other including the intersection. So I think what's cool about this example is imagine if your partner says, hey, I'm gonna, you know, you're pumping gas at a gas station. Your partner says, hey, I'm gonna run in, get you something to drink. What would you like to drink? Now, what you could say is you could say, well, you know what, I really could use a Coke or a diet. Now what that means is that you've given your partner a lot of options because Coke 
could be just the name brand, but you could also choose a, another kind of Coke, maybe Coke Zero, or maybe a flavor of Coke, like vanilla Coke. But the idea that you said, I want a Coke or a diet, also opens up all the diet possibilities, such as Diet Mountain Dew, Diet Pepsi, all the diet varieties of, um, of Dr. Pepper. But it also includes Diet Coke, which is an intersection of the world of diet and the intersection of Coke. So choosing A or B, so this example here, says I want all of the possibilities of A and I want all the possibilities of B, including its intersection. So what I'm going to do is use this yellow highlighter and highlight all of this and say this is what OR looks like. OR looks like the yellow highlighted. So let's just count the elements. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There are nine elements out of our 15, which is our sample space. And that gives me 0.60 or 60%. 60% chance of choosing a ball from the billiard set that is either a prime or odd. Now, here's some notation that you can use with A or B. And you might have to do this in the mathematics program, like the homework. So the union would be a capital letter U. Now I don't put a little tail on it right there. That's a little math grammar thing. So or, or is A union B. Now I'm going to have to kind of scroll down and scroll up here a little bit because now we're going to talk about AND. Now the AND is a lot more restrictive because let's go back to the in, that uh, story about your partner getting you a drink. Um, what if you yelled instead of saying, hey, give me a Coke or a diet, what if you said, oh, hey, give me a Diet Coke? Now that's very restrictive because I want both to happen at the same time. So both happen at the same time. I've seen books also use one time at the same instance and the this makes it much more restrictive because now if we use the equation I want P A and B this is saying I want the A to happen and the A is choosing an odd number and I want the B to happen which is I want a prime number. So really this is saying I want an odd prime number or a prime number that's odd. So let's scroll up here a little bit and let's see what we have. These numbers in the intersection point are the odd numbers that are also prime. See two is prime but not odd. One 9 and 15 are odd but not prime. So we have these five choices, and these five choices make our probability space. So choosing A or B, sorry, A and B, would be 5 out of 15, which is 0.3 repeating. I like to round to three decimal places, because then I can convert that very easily to a percentage. 33, whoops, 0.3%. So the symbol for AND is the probability of A, this is an upside down U with no tail, B. Okay, so in the previous video, I teased a little bit about this complement. And the complement of an event, the complement of an event is the set of all elements not in the original set. So the original set refers back to what we're taking the complement of. So the probability of the complement of A, now we knew that A was um, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 
So the, we would have to then think about all of those that are even. So let's just make the complement of a set. So this is going to be 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14. So this is the set of the complement of A. Now what's important on your homework is sometimes they ask for the set and sometimes they'll ask for the probability of that set. Notice a difference in this notation. One has the P in front of it, which is asking for a probability, and notice this doesn't have the P in front of it. That's asking for the set. So if we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, Here's 7 out of 15, which gives me a th rounded to 3 decimals, 0.467, or 46.7%. Now, I want to highlight, before we do the uh, complement of B, I want to highlight that if we take the probability of A, which was 8 out of 15, and we add to it probability of uh, the complement of A, which is 7 out of 15, we get 1. This illustrates that the event plus the event complement, and that little tick mark is a short way to write complement, is always equal to 1 or 100%. Now why don't you pause the video for a moment and try to find this probability of the complement of B. Okay, so if you pause the video, you saw that there were six elements in B, so if we subtract the six from 15, we get nine. Another way you could have done this is listed all of the non-prime numbers in that set, but subtracting from one is probably a lot quicker. And this is gonna be 0.60, which is 60%, which again, if you want to look back at the previous video, you can see that we did talk about complement. Now, to tease the next, uh, actually, I should say, to tease the video, um, two videos from now, we're going to talk about what if the probability and probability of A and B, what if they don't share any elements? If they don't share any elements, they are mutually exclusive. So if their intersection, so here's A and here's B. If you have A and B and there's nothing in common between A and B, then these are mutually exclusive sets. Now as we saw earlier, R, A, and B had that green intersection filled in with numbers that were both prime and odd. So therefore, I'm going to use three dots as kind of a short term, short way of saying therefore. Therefore, A and B, and what I mean by here, I mean both sets, are not, in our example, mutually exclusive. What's cool about things, if they are mutually exclusive, it unlocks a couple more mathematical cool tricks. So in two videos, you'll see more about this term mutually exclusive. But thank you for watching our second part of our introduction to probability video.